Well, I've got new lights, and I figured I'd save them for a very special video. I've been using the same camera for more than three years, and I've gotten better and better at using it. Over the years, lots of people have asked me what camera I use, so I think it's finally time to make a video about it. What's up guys, I'm Aaron the Tech Guy, and this is the Nikon D5500. I'm going to say my conclusion right up front. I don't think this is the best camera to get for video if you're just starting out. But if you're planning on doing only photography, this is a great option. Let's start out with the good stuff. First off, the ergonomics. This camera is made totally out of plastic, but it still feels really solidly built. I've dropped my camera a few times, but thankfully it is not broken yet. Don't try this at home by the way. The grip is rubber and has a very nice feel in the hand. Since the camera is made totally out of plastic and therefore is quite lightweight, I'm able to hold the camera for hours at a time and my hands don't get tired. The buttons are also in a great place for my hands to reach every single button without having to move my average sized hands at all. On the top of the camera, there is a hot shoe mount that fits all standard accessories such as my flash and my mic. That mic plugs into the side of the camera. Unfortunately, there is no headphone jack so you cannot monitor audio while recording video. You have to use the levels on the screen to monitor it visually. The preamps in this camera are quite solid. You can judge for yourself right now because that is how my audio is plugged in. Now for picture quality. Just to preface this, I'm not an expert at all, so if you want an, an in-depth analytical over overview of, of, this, of this image sensor, check out like a DP reviews vid review or something like that. But you can judge for yourself. Every single video that I've ever shot for this channel has been shot on this camera. Except, ironically, the b-roll for this video, because you can't really shoot the camera with that camera, it just doesn't work that way. This camera has the same sensor as the more expensive APS-C cameras, such as the Nikon D7500 and the D500, as well as the cheaper D3500, meaning that the image quality will be almost exactly the same on all these cameras. It's a 24 megapixel sensor that can record up to 1920x1080 at 60 frames per second. Personally, I love the image that comes straight out of this camera. It has warm, rich colors that have to grade very little. Obviously, the low light performance won't be quite the same as a full frame sensor, but I have pushed the ISO to 6400 without much of an issue. Past that, however, your image will turn into a hot, grainy mess. The video quality is quite nice as well, and this camera shoots at 5 FPS if you're into that kind of thing. Battery life is quite good for photography, and I usually get between 500 and 800 photos per one, per one battery, but for video, I can only get a couple hours recording at the highest quality. Luckily for this camera, you can get two batteries often bundled included with the camera such as I did, which solves the problem pretty effectively. Another thing to note is that since this camera is a DSLR, it has an OVF, not an EVF, an optical viewfinder, not an electronic viewfinder. I happen to like the o an OVF more because when I'm shooting flash photography, I can way underexpose knowing that the flash will compensate for it, and I'll still be able to compose my shot versus an EVF where what you see in the viewfinder is what you'll get. So if you're, if you're underexposing for a flash, it'll be very hard to see what you're actually shooting, shooting and it'll be very hard to compose. I say what is possibly the most unique feature of cameras in this price point for the last of the amazing features, the screen. Simply put, it's fantastic. I've had the opportunity to use the a7 III by Sony, and the screen on a camera more than a thousand dollars less simply blows it out of the water. The Nikon D5500 has a 3.2 inch, one million dot flip on touchscreen. It is straight up fantastic to use, and I'm not sure what I'll do when I eventually upgrade the camera to a camera that does not have a flip out screen. You're gonna need that screen because of the worst part of this camera, the video autofocus. For photo, the autofocus is actually fantastic, if a little unreliable in low light, but for video, it is straight trash. So this is the test of the continuous autofocus. As you can see, as you can see, it's pretty constantly searching for my face, and it's hunting back and forth a lot. It's just not very good, and you could probably hear that it's also quite loud as well. Now, if you compare that to something like the Canons, it is much better in that in that regard. But I cannot use it just be, because of, of the hunting and the volume of this autofocus. I basically can't use it at all except for setting up headshots such as the one you're seeing right now, and I cannot use the auto continuous autofocus for anything. I've had to le learn how to use manual focus 
for all my video productions, including every single video you've ever seen on this channel. It is for this reason that I cannot recommend this camera to anyone just starting out with video. Not having autofocus is just too high of a hurdle to jump over. Trust me, I, I did it myself. Especially when there are other amazing cameras out there. Although the image quality is fantastic, and I've loved this camera for photography, I have occasionally felt like I should have done my research better and considered the Sony cameras in my purchasing decision. The A6500 is probably a better deal for videographers, as is the Canon T7i, but if you're buying a camera solely for photography, the G5500 is definitely worth a look. Congratulations, you have made it to the end of, to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on, turn on notifications with the bell icon so you don't miss any of our future videos. As always, you're watching Aaron the Tech Guy. Life don't seem like it used to. Love don't feel like it used to. Oh no.